Born with a natural talent to wrestle, blessed with the skills and athleticism to unleash jaw-dropping attacks, the story of Hangman Adam Page is one that would be told for many years to come. From being lost in the world, searching for his purpose, to finding his golden path as one of the greatest wrestlers of our generation, this video will take you on a journey far back in time to Adam's very first steps to achieving greatness. But be sure to stay until the very end, when we reveal the epic moment when Adam Page picked up his first AEW Championship. Let's begin! Adam Page, whose real name is Stephen Blake Waltz, was born on the 27th of July 1991 in Halifax County, Virginia. Page was a naturally gifted student growing up, a kid who could study on his way to school and ace tests others couldn't after pulling all-nighters. He finished fourth in a class of about 500 students in high school, giving him enough credits to enter college with a junior standing. Page attended Virginia Tech as a communication major, with the aspirations of one day working in the film industry, a passion that was sparked after making two full-length films with his friends in high school. However, Page realized after his first year of learning more about the movie industry that working in Hollywood didn't have the same appeal as making movies with his closest buddies. He then decided to finish school after his sophomore year, earning his degree two years earlier and graduating at just 19 years old. Little did he know that several years later, those skills in acting would bolster his unforeseen wrestling career. Page made his wrestling debut in 2008, but at that time, Page wasn't so sure he wanted to make a career in wrestling. He worked as a full-time high school teacher, teaching journalism and graphic design for five years while wrestling at the same time. Page had that six-foot-tall Hollywood lead actor looks, and despite his height, he was capable of executing high-risk acrobatic styles inside the ring. Page knew he had what it took to become a pro wrestler, so he quit his teaching job and became a full-time wrestler. In 2013, Page signed his first wrestling contract with Ring of Honor and went on to participate in the Top Prospect Tournament. However, he was defeated in the early stages and was barely noticed at the time. But Page knew he was on the right path. He could have easily quit and gone back to his teaching job, but he didn't. He stuck with the promotion, showed up every day for work, and kept grinding it out in the gym. In 2014, he had his first major storyline, which was a feud with a deadly group known as The Decade under the Ring of Honor. The Decade, which included BJ Whitmer, Jimmy Jacobs, and Roderick Strong, defeated Page, Cedric Alexander, and Mark Briscoe in a tag team match that's still considered one of the best under the promotion. This match was so awesome that the fans demanded to see more of Page. And just like that, his fortune in wrestling changed. Page went on to join the decade, but left after a while to join another group. The group that put him in the limelight and on posters of events, the Bullet Club. Joining the Bullet Club was one of the best choices Page made in his career. It was during his first appearance with the group that he got the nickname Hangman after he handed a member of the Bullet Club, Chris Sabin, with a hangman's noose during a 10-man tag team match. The Bullet Club caused mayhem in Ring of Honor, but with their leader Adam Cole leaving in 2017 to join the WWE, the group knew someone else needed to step up and keep the attention they'd garnered. So Page, having the looks, charisma, and voice to sway the crowd, was selected to change the trajectory of the group's storyline. The new storyline was for Page to disappear like he had vanished or been kidnapped. It was so real that at some point, many fans took it seriously. Page's sudden disappearance led to a manhunt, with the Bullet Club handing out missing posters saying, Where's Hangman? As they tried to locate their kidnapped friend, War Machine, Hurricane, X-Pac, Ricochet, and even Glacier were among those making cameos posing the question, Where's Hangman? The storyline took another turn when the mystery finally got answered. A member of the group, Nick Jackson, used his psychic powers to reveal that Paige was being held hostage in a dark room, tied up to a chair in front of a TV with the WWE. For the record, there obviously weren't any real psychic powers, it was all just part of the storyline. 
but close friends of Paige couldn't help but satisfy their curiosity to see if it was actually true. Paige himself told ESPN during an interview about the massive number of emails he received during the time from supporters asking if he was okay. The Ring of Honor promotion also played its part by keeping Paige off television and turning down interview requests to further angle the storyline. Then, the time came for Paige to come out of hiding. On the 22nd of September 2017, at Death Before Dishonor, Paige ran out to the ring with duct tape over his mouth in the middle of a six-man tag team match. He was able to pull off a diving moonsault to the outside with his hands tied while wearing jeans and cowboy boots. The scene was absolutely crazy. It had the loudest reaction of the night from the fans. From that moment on, Paige wasn't just a member of the Bullet Club, he became a superstar. In 2018, Paige was signed to New Japan Pro Wrestling. It was under this promotion he met Kenny Omega for the first time, a man who would later become his partner and biggest rival till today. Paige lost to Omega in a heated bout under the NJPW, but both men moved on to join the All Elite Wrestling. Now, here's the drill. On the 25th of May 2019, Paige was the last man to enter AEW's Casino Battle Royale, throwing out MJF to win the Rumble and gain a shot to fight for the inaugural AEW World Championship. On the 31st of August 2019, Paige faced fellow contender Chris Jericho at All In. The match was a bloodfest. Even after Paige delivered his buckshot lariat, Jericho wasn't willing to stay down. Paige tried to sneak an attack from over the ropes, but Jericho countered with the Judas effect, sending Paige lifeless to the canvas of the ring. That was all Jericho needed to win the title. But for Paige, it was another missed opportunity to beat the best. In 2020, Paige teamed up with Kenny Omega to form one of the most powerful tag teams in the AEW. The similarity in style between them was perfect. They were so good. They defeated the reigning tag team champions, the SoCal Uncensored, to win the tag team titles. Page and Omega held the titles for 228 days until September 2020 at All Out, where they lost the title to FTK. Page was then inserted into a tournament to determine the next challenger for the AEW World Championship. He defeated Colt Cabana in the first round and Wardlow in the semi finals to move on to the finals against his former teammate Kenny Omega. The skills and athleticism of Omega were no match for Page, leaving Page with his second loss to Omega. While Omega won both the tournament and the AEW World Championship, with that loss, the AEW had other plans for Page, a plan to ink his name in the books of history as one of the best wrestlers in the promotion. But before we talk about that, let's do something for you watching this video. We're doing a shout out contest for our subscribers. So if you want to get a personal shout out from us, go comment epic in the comment section below and stand a chance to win the contest. It's pretty easy, so go comment epic now. In 2021, Paige was involved in a storyline where the Dark Order tried to recruit him to their group. And after Paige defeated former WWE superstar Matt Hardy, the Dark Order came to celebrate his victory with him. The storyline then took a new twist. Paige and the Dark Order went into a feud with AEW's champion Kenny Omega and the tag team champions Young Bucks. The AEW then organized a 10-man tag team match with Paige and the Dark Order versus Kenny Omega and the Young Bucks. The stipulation for the match was that if Paige and the Dark Order won, Paige would receive a title match against Omega, and the Dark Order would be given a shot to take the Tag Team Championship from the Young Bucks. Omega and his team ended up winning, but Paige was the last man standing on his side. The fans loved his outstanding performance, and boom! Paige automatically became the main focus of the storyline. After AEW's homecoming event on the 4th of August 2021, Omega and all his allies attacked Paige after his win at the event. He went for a layoff period before his return at AEW's second Dynamite anniversary as a surprise entrant in a seven-man casino ladder match. He won the match, 
and secured himself a future shot for the AEW World Championship, a match against his arch rival, Kenny Omega. On November 13, 2021, Page and Omega went head to head for the third time in their careers at full gear for the AEW World Championship. Omega, who had adopted a heel character at the time, came with his manager, Don Calise, to help him out at the ringside. The match started and Page was gaining momentum early on, before Calise played a few tricks behind the referee's back. Page wasn't swayed by these little tricks, so he kept the momentum up. He performed a suicide dive on Omega outside the ring and gave him a suplex to the ground. Getting back into the ring, Omega gained back the momentum before performing a skydive on Page after he hit him with a clothesline. Omega then threw Page out of the ring for his manager to deviously attack while he distracted the referee. After so many draw-dropping skills from both men, Omega pulled off another trick by pushing the referee in front of Page who was going for a clothesline. The referee was out cold. And that's the moment Omega's manager tried to use the belt as a weapon on Page from behind. Page turned around and smacked the manager out of the ring. Omega quickly stood up and also tried to use the belt as a weapon, but Page did a quick maneuver to catch Omega for his finishing buckshot lariat move. The crowd went wild because Omega was out cold. It was Page's moment to win the title, but the referee was still out from Page's clothesline. Another referee ran in to give the count, but Omega regained and he kicked out at two. Page was devastated. He was bleeding from his forehead and he didn't know what else to do to get the win. Page hit Omega with his second finisher, the rite of passage, and Omega still kicked out at two. Like, oh my gosh, the crowd went wild again. What else could Page do to get Omega to stay down? Finally, Page went for an over the rope flip and followed it with a clothesline that sent Omega down to the canvas. One, two, three. Adam Hangman Page won the title. He cried out when the referee raised his hand as the winner with members of the Bullet Club and the locker room coming out to applaud his performance. This match was so fantastic and it received a five and a half star rating from sports journalist Dave Meltzer, with Meltzer describing the match as a classic. Though Page was able to break the AEW championship streak of Omega, his next opponent was not any easier. Maybe we'll do a part two for that. Make sure you check out this other video showing on your screen. Bye for now.